Hey everyone, welcome back to Red Donkey Projections. I'm Eric and we have Lucas as always. Hey everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be filling in our updated uh, every two weeks uh, presidential election. Um, there are a few things that have changed that we thought are worth talking about. Um, this trend of uh, Black Lives Matter and different hotspots of coronavirus are swinging things a bit and that's what we will be talking about in this video. And with that being said, Let's get right into it. So there's actually uh, some safe states that we are no longer putting as safe now. Um, although, um, let me just fill them out anyways. Oops, I forgot to name it today, but it's okay. You guys know who's blue and who's red. If you guys don't know, here's a reminder. Blue is the Democrat, who is Joe Biden. And red is the Republican, who in this case is incumbent president, Donald Trump. All right. Um, filling in the map right now. So I think one of the changes is that we are now moving New Mexico to the safe column for the Democrats. This is no longer a swing state in um, no longer a swing state in Joe Biden's campaign. And it has been shifting very much to the left now with polling showing Trump, sorry, Biden up by about like 13, 14 points to the point where we do believe mm -hmm. that it's yeah. safe enough to consider it to be a safe state. So we it's, are putting the yeah. state as safe. It's not even considered a battleground state on Joe Biden's own yeah. website. Exactly. So that, that's yeah. saying a lot. All right. I believe that is it for the safe states. Let's the now Democrats. look at the yeah, safe Democratic states. Now we're looking at the safe Trump states now. Obviously the Midwest except for District 2. Um, the classic ones. Oh my God, why do I keep hitting it? Let's see. There are a few states down in the South that we are not going to touch. I mean, that we are going to discuss. Um, we will talk about how there is an African-American electorate in some of these certain states that could possibly, we're not sure yet, could swing um, this state a bit more to the left. Lucas will point out what state that is and explain why. Yeah, the further. one state is Mississippi. We might see incre increased African-American turnout, and um, a lot of the African-Americans are Democrats. So if we see higher turnouts there, we might be moving the, the range, sorry, the margin for a state like Mississippi from safe to likely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. However, right now we are going to keep it at safe, but we could see some changes happening soon. So as you might see on this map, there is a notable omission. That is the state of Alaska. We are no longer putting the state of Alaska as a safe state. We are now moving this to a likely. And one of the reasons why is because looking at the polling right now, things are not looking good for President Trump. In the most recent poll, he's up by just one point. And in past polls, he's only up by like three to five points, which is definitely not that great. Um, however, looking at that voter data, though, there are a lot of undecided voters. Um, and by the end of, um, by the time it's election day, I do think that many of those undecided voters will probably move to the Trump column. And for that reason, we're, could keep, we're putting it as likely because it probably will go to President Trump, but it's by no means competitive. But... Um, things are tightening a bit according to the polls. Um, yes, Alaska is this pretty solid red state, but it has been seeing slight trends to the left recently, which is pretty interesting. Anyways, um, let's now fill out the other state, the likely Republican states, which I do this every episode in which there is no other likely Republican states. So we're going to head to the likely Democratic states. First state here is Minnesota. Very unlikely this goes to President Trump. Eric, do you want to talk a little bit more about this? Yeah, as we know, and we say in a lot of our videos, this is where all of these protests have begun. Here in Minneapolis, this is where George Floyd was um, choked to death, unfortunately. And this is essentially, as I say, the epicenter of this, of all of these protests that are now all over the country. We are seeing some insane stuff in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so, which shows how it's definitely, you know, um, impacted a lot of different states other than Minneapolis, uh, and other than Minnesota. So this is why we're pretty confident that Minnesota will go to 
uh, Joe Biden hasn't went Republican in such a long time anyways. So there's no reason why it would go Republican this election. There are also three other likely Democratic states, obviously just around New Mexico since we moved that now. Um, Colorado, New Mexico, Georgia. Probably will go to Joe Biden anyway. Nevada, we are seeing a lead margin, I believe, but um, we got to remember that polls do usually overestimate the Republican there. We have seen that in past elections, such as the um, 2016 election. Did I say Georgia? I meant, uh, oops. Um, I meant New Mexico, Colorado, Virginia, not Georgia. Sorry, mistake there. Anyways, um, Nevada is probably the most likely of the three to go to Donald Trump, although the chance is very little. I mean, I think Joe Biden will carry this one. Talking about Colorado now, Colorado has been swinging a lot to the left recently. They currently have a Democratic governor, Governor Polis, and also um, John Hickenlooper running for the Senate against Cory Gardner, um, who we think will probably be Cory Gardner, because Cory Gardner is a staunch Trump supporter in such a deep blue state. I don't want to say deep blue, but it's been shifting a lot to the left recently because this state did go to George Bush. Um, I believe both times he ran. I, yeah, I think <clears throat> so. Um, definitely is a likely here might be moving to a safe, um, uh, in the near future. Virginia, um, has also become a deep, pretty deep blue state. Now Virginia GOP party has been kind of not doing that well. And it's kind of surprising to say this because it's been 12 years since this state was won by Barack Obama for the first time in a very long time. I believe since the, you know, I, I, I want to say 64 landslide, but I don't think that's correct. It's just so surprising that it's moved this much to the left this recently. So we are still putting in Virginia as likely. Polling also supports that as well. And I believe that is democratic states. Oh, one more. Um, Maine all state about to move this to safe we're almost there but um i think kind of polling is kind of a drawback for us um and i yeah i, I do think that we should keep this one as likely same for the state of northern new hampshire i forgot to i put that as safe that was an accident it should have been likely as well mm -hmm. uh the alabama of the northeast um it is a little bit more um what's the word not it's less democratic than other, other Northeast states. Yeah. It's technically a swing state. Um, but really yeah, uh, we definitely did see some competition like in New Hampshire where Hillary Clinton only narrowly took the state along with Maine. Her performance there was, you know, not the best, not what people expected. So it shows how, although this election is going to be pretty different from 2016 it does show how there is potential for competition but it's probably not likely in this election i completely agree with that Alrighty, now let's head to other states now we're going to head now so let's do lean democratic you know let's do lean republican I keep it pattern um first lean democratic state is texas texas has surprisingly republican. become yeah sorry say uh, lean republican has surprisingly become a competitive state not something we expected um, mm -hmm. like I remember maybe like, uh, 10 years ago or actually 10 years ago is too much, but like uh, four years ago, 2016, like we'd still be taught that Texas is a safe GOP state. Well, that, that's definitely not the case anymore. Um, mm -hmm. with the recent polling, by, <clears throat> we had Biden up at one point by, I think 0.2. Now Trump is in the lead by, I think 0.3 according to 538 right now. Um, yeah. which is not a good sign for him. And this should be a solid GOP state. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Texas is dealing with major spikes in coronavirus as of a few days ago. I'm not sure how they're doing as of today, um, July 22nd. Maybe it's calmed down, but I do feel like there are a lot of citizens here in Texas who um, highly disapprove of you know the how Texas dealt with uh, coronavirus, and maybe that's also why it is swinging a bit more mm -hmm. to the left these days. Although I do think the governor, Greg Abbott, has been doing some other things. I think he signed an order that um, face masks are mandatory now, which mm -hmm. um, yeah. will probably benefit them. But um, <clears throat> anyways, Texas um, has moved at first from a safe to a likely, now to a lean 
tilt state. This is in between tilt and lean. Um, we really don't know which side yet. We're going to keep taking a look at the polls here and everything that we, <clears throat> all the events here. And we might honestly move the state to tilt because things are really tightening up. Um, alrighty. And another lean Republican state is the state of Iowa. Iowa, the reason why we're not putting this one as tilt is because um, it is a more conservative area. And polling also supports that it's not as close as some of the other states might be. I think this state has, I believe, about one point up for um, President Trump, which is more than most of the other states here, including the state of Texas. Iowa voted nine points for President Trump in 2016, which is a pretty large margin. And um, for that reason, we are going to keep this one as lean. And I do think that is the end of the lean Republicans. Oh, wait, also one more. Gosh, I keep missing them. Main, Main second, second district. Yep. Eric Armstrong. Uh, yeah, so this is the more conservative area of Maine. It's a larger uh, congressional district, as you can see. So, and using a rule of thumb, usually these bigger congressional districts tend to vote more Republican. Um, it uh, solidly, almost solidly, I think, went to Donald Trump in 2016. He has a pretty good shot of taking it this year. Um, the people in the second district, again, lean more conservatively and are in a bit more support of him than other areas. I agree with that. So we're going to put this one as lean. Now the blue wall. Um, interestingly enough, let's start with Mr. Michigan and Pennsylvania. We're going to keep these two as lean, but um, these two states, in particular Michigan, are trending more towards the likely column. Now we are seeing Biden up by large numbers um, right now, such as like, I said seven points in Michigan now, somewhere around there. It's, it's a huge lead in the poll. Yeah, like six, high high six, high six margin. High six, okay. Yes, um, the poll, I mean, sorry, no, the polls were not wrong in 2016. Yes, they were incorrect in, in a sense, but they were all within the margin of error, except for the state of Wisconsin, which we'll be discussing right after this. Um, starting with Michigan, though, large African-American electorate who do tend to vote for the Democratic candidate, um, especially with the recent events, there might be a lot of support. This is near the epicenter of the coronavirus protests, such as, because uh, it did happen in the city of Minneapolis. Michigan's very near that. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why Trump won these states in the, in the 2016 election was because pollsters underestimated the number of white working class voters that might vote for President Trump. But I think this time around, it does look like the numbers will be slightly higher than what they were in 2016. So we do think that Trump will probably carry both of these states within, sorry, Biden will carry these two states probably in a lean margin now. Wisconsin, we are officially moving the state of Wisconsin to a lean. And with that, uh, Joe Biden has won the election. Um, we are moving this to lean because looking at the statistics right now, yes, polling was outside the margin of error here. Um, they have, what is it, Biden up by seven points now? It's pretty impressive um, in a state that went to Trump in 2016. We got to remember, though, Hillary Clinton did carry the state in 26. Sorry, Hillary Clinton was leading the polls by six and a half points, but Trump did carry it. Yes. Um, however, I do think that the um, numbers will probably be slightly more correct this time. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like Biden, at the end of the day, with the recent events that's happened, coronavirus, Black Lives Matter protests. Um, at the end of the day, Wisconsin will be shifting um, to a lean. This is not a definite lean. This is an in-between tilt D and lean D for us. Uh, yeah. Because it is more in between there. At the moment, um, if these trends continue to fall, because honestly, um, ever since I remember, these are, you know, this is the longest lasting protests um, regarding Black Lives Matter that I've ever seen. Maybe there were others, but this is one, one of the most, this is one of the longest lasting protests in recent years. So yes. if this trend continues to happen, then these predictions will remain. But once again, we still have a few months to the election. Anything can happen. But once again, last time, if this trend continues, these margins will stand. And this is what will this is exactly what Joe Biden needs to win. As you can see, you need to, uh, 270. Biden has 278. 
So, you know, it's really important that he does um, uh, set some of his time here in the blue ball to really secure those votes. If he can. I agree. And I've said this many times on our channel, but one of Hillary Clinton's biggest mistakes was not focusing on locking down the Midwest and the so-called blue wall. Now, Joe Biden in our opinions, he should be focusing on these three states. He doesn't need Arizona to win. He doesn't need Florida. He doesn't need Texas. He doesn't need North Carolina. He needs the blue wall. <clears throat> if he can lock these down and spend all his money on locking them down, he will be president of the United States, um, which is, again, a mistake that Hillary Clinton made. Um, she probably should have campaigned more here, so, and, and she didn't do that. <clears throat> Anyways, um, let's now head to... Um, I believe, are we putting someone as lead now? Oh, it's debating here. Um, Florida, I think we are also putting as lead. Mm -hmm. um, with the rising number of coronavirus cases, um, and people don't view Ron DeSantis' handling as being that positive, we are going to put this one as lead. Plus, polling does support this as well. Biden is up by about six points. Hillary did not reach that margin in 2016. I believe that I think... Trump might have actually been leading in at the end. Uh, don't don't count me in that, but I, I, if I remember correctly, that is what happened. Um, I do think Joe Biden will be able to carry the state of Florida if what's happening continues to happen. Remember that this is still a tilt lean D, so it's not fully confirmed yet, but we do think that this probably will be going to Biden right now, which is kind of surprising to say, considering that, like, in March or, sorry, not March, if, if we were doing this prediction in May, we'd put the state of Florida as... Um, lean r which has clearly changed recently in fact in our one and only election night video we gave the state to donald trump but that, that has uh, changed a lot recently yep and now the state of arizona eric do you want to discuss arizona yeah so as lucas put on the map we are also moving arizona to a lean um polling does um show arizona in this area once again we can't solely rely off polls but it is a fairly good indicator um, Arizona in this case is dealing with, you know, coronavirus, like it, it, the hot, there are a lot of hot spots in this state. I think from what I remember on the news, there are like five, 6,000 new cases here. So it, it's pretty severe, not as severe as Florida, but Arizona has to watch out. Um, additionally, as we've said earlier, Arizona does have this, um, Hispanic electorate. And they are in support of Black Lives Matter, and they probably will want to turn out in this election to express themselves more. So Arizona, again, is still kind of competitive, but we do think the Democrats have a pretty good shot. Um, you know, I know this can't be directly related to, but um, for example, in the Senate, Mark Kelly is doing very well against Mark McSally, and. Mm -hmm. I believe it was in this area where House seats in 2018 just flipped from Republican I believe, to Democrat. Yeah, I think, I think one did flip. So it did yeah. as far as oh, maybe, maybe that was New Mexico. But yeah, there are indicators that Arizona is swinging a bit more to the left. I'm not saying it's not competitive. It is still very competitive. I mean, it would be really interesting to see how this race turns out. I absolutely agree with that. And looking at polling, although Joe Biden's lead is only about like three points, the polls have overestimated the Republicans both in 2016 and in 2018 in the Senate election. 2016, Trump was expected to win by four points. He won by 3.5. In 20, um, 2018, polls expected Martha McSally to win, I believe, by a point. And then uh, Kirsten Sinema obviously won by two, 2.3 points, I believe, somewhere around there. So um, we think that this one probably will be a lean now. And yes, we do not solely rely on polling. If you want to check out our polling video, that's on our channel. It's a lot different than what we're, we're predicting ourselves. <clears throat> All right. We have one, two, three, four, four left. All right. Let's do Georgia. I'll actually hit Georgia right now. <clears throat> According to 538, uh, Georgia has now swung in Trump's favor, I believe. It is like... Uh, point something in Trump's favor, but uh, to be honest, I don't really trust the pollsters they're using because the last two polls that were put in were Gravis and C minus the rated. group. Yeah, both yeah, C minus rated, which are pretty bad ratings. First of all, and those polls do tend to lean to the Republicans quite a lot. Um, so keeping that in mind, we are going to keep Georgia as a tilt, although this is between tilt and lean 
no indication, complete indication yet, because Georgia is swinging more to the left now. <clears throat> so um, we're going to keep this one as tilt. If new polls come in and they follow Trafalgar's pattern, which um, I'm not sure yet, but I don't believe they will, um, we're going to move this one to lean, but right now it's tilt. <clears throat> All right. I'll actually do Ohio as well. Ohio is also a tilt. Um, Ohio polls actually have Biden up by about one to two points, I think. Um, obviously, a good, pretty good sign for Biden. Ohio, oh, recent news to John Kasich. He, um, this is very yep. recent. I believe it was yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, two John days ago. Kasich is now expected. Um, I use the word expected because it's not completely certain yet, but he's expected to be speaking at the DNC in 2020. In, uh, I think, is it July or August? No, sorry. What are you saying? No, that's not July, August. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's pretty big. And mm -hmm. he is expected to endorse him, I believe, Joe Biden. He's expected to endorse Joe Biden at that convention. Um, for those of you who don't know, here's the background. John Kasich is the former, uh, former governor of Ohio. He is... I mean, I'm not sure how to say it, but I think he is a more moderate conservative than most other people. He was a very popular governor during his time. In fact, he ran for president in 2016. Um, his campaign obviously didn't do that well, um, but he has a good amount of name recognition. And his in alleged endorsement, because we don't know for sure yet, might really be swinging Ohio, especially those undecided moderate voters more to Joe Biden, which would be pretty impactful on this election in that sense. So with that being said, though, we are going to keep this one as tilt. We got to wait on exactly how this would impact it. That's why we didn't make a video on it. Yeah, we just, we want to wait a few more days and we will see mm -hmm. if we will be moving the state more to the left. Because this was a state that Obama won both times he ran, same with Iowa. <clears throat> so we got to watch out for Ohio. And, um, Eric, why don't you take the final two states? Um, yep. I'll yeah, I'll start off with North Carolina. Um, so we have decided to keep North Carolina at a tilt Democratic margin. Um, polling does lean in Biden's favor quite a bit. I think it has calmed down a little as of a few days ago. Um, but before it was like Biden plus seven, Biden plus, I don't know, five. But now it, it has come down a little. Once again, I don't solely go off polls, but it is a good indicator. Um, North Carolina is this battleground state. Donald Trump did win it in 2016. Um, Biden does have a pretty good shot of taking this. It's still kind of competitive, but we feel like uh, Joe Biden, um, if he focuses a bit of his time in North Carolina, he could take it. And I think it is here where North Carolina has... Um, an African, Amer a quite um, a significant African American population. So, if he can appeal to those, um, yeah, if he can appeal to those voters, um, and they could turn out because of all of this Black Lives Matter protest, mm -hmm. this could give him the leg up. And we're seeing protests in the city of Charlotte as well, which is the biggest city in, in uh, North Carolina. So, this will be very interesting to see. And Eric, why don't you take the final district? Yep. So. The last district we have here that we are going to put as Tilt Democratic, Nebraska 2nd District. Um, so as we can see, compared to the other districts in Nebraska, it is the smallest. It is the most compact, highly populated. Once again, using the rule of thumb, the more populated a district is, we feel like it does swing a bit more and more to the left because it's more urban there. I think more densely populated, you mean? Yes, sorry. Yeah. I don't know what I said before. Yeah, more densely populated. Um, it, they do tend to swing more to the left. Um, Barack Obama did take this um, in 2008, I believe. Yep. Um, so it is uh, quite more competitive than you may think. So it, it is possible that Joe Biden can take this, but it only carries one electoral vote. It doesn't matter much to him. But, of course, it would be a bonus if he did get it. So we are going to give this one as toss-up. Um, polling did show Biden up by surprisingly quite a bit, like double digits. Um, I do think those polls were conducted, like, not that recently, but um, that's interesting to see. Oh, sorry. Um, not not toss-up, I meant tilt. 
Um, this is a tilt to you. Yeah, Although, it does add only one vote, which brings the final count to 334 to 204 for Biden. Um, yeah. Very, very, very slim tilt here. It's between toss-up and tilt because um, we might see turnout go a little bit higher um, in Nebraska. But we do got to remember this is Nebraska. This is a pretty deep red state. Um, so we got to also watch this one. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this one, and we'll see what happens in the future in Nebraska 2nd District. And that is the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.